Hey, what's up spooky fam? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very exciting, pretty spooky video to share with you guys. Today I'm going to be talking about my four favorite documentaries to watch around Halloween time. So of course they're going to be super scary. One I actually have yet to finish because I'm that scared to watch it and movies and like stuff that they don't scare me. So I'm lying. Certain movies scare me. I love anthology movies and actually Marissa and I watched a really good anthology movie this weekend and it was called Holidays. It's on Netflix. It's so good. <laughs> I'm not going to get into too much right now. I would like to say a big rest in peace for Francis up here. The cats will not leave these decorations alone like I anticipated, but let's get spooky. So if you guys are like me, you love a good movie that preys on the fear of the fact that it could possibly be based on a true story. If you guys remember when The Haunting in Connecticut first came out, everyone was like, bitch, that movie is scary as fuck. That movie is preying on our emotions. That movie is it's scary. But I found something to back up that evidence. And I actually watched this in full. It was, it was very interesting. It was very good. This documentary is called The Fear is Real, Reinvestigating the Haunting in Connecticut. It's actually on YouTube. I will leave it linked down below so you guys can watch it as well. You guys can tell that some of the, like it's a dramatization movie, but it does have some of the actual family members from the events. Some just did not want to participate. Some, you know, were deceased, but they just, you know, had to replace it with actors or, you know, people who do dramatizations, but it's all their accounts and their stories. When I first came in the house, my brother was showing me some of the weird things like the, the room where they made the headstones and the footstones and the body lifts. And that's kind of how we were putting things together that it was a funeral home. So as you're watching this documentary and as the family members are recounting their experiences, you're also seeing the parts of the movie that they're talking about. So you like feel, wow, like, damn, this is some scary shit. In the movie, it shows my brother spinning me on the morgue table. We were just joking around and we were actually playing hide and seek. And I laid down on top of it and was gonna cover up with a blanket and he grabbed me and started spinning me. I started getting scared. And I started, you know, getting flashes of things and I asked him to stop. He didn't stop right away, but he didn't stop. It's, uh, it, it's from a couple of years ago, so I mean, it's not the best quality, but it's still very spooky and definitely worth the watch. So this second one is called The Nightmare. It's on Netflix. I believe it's on both Netflix, Canadian and American. I have Canadian Netflix. But this one I have yet to finish. I started watching it before it was on Netflix. Or actually, you know what? I think I started watching this when it first came out on Netflix. Maybe about a year and a half ago. And mm -mm. no thank you. My ex actually had sleep paralysis and on many occasions I woke up in the middle of the night watching him struggle in his sleep, not being able to wake him up, not knowing what the fuck was going on. So this documentary, The Nightmare, is pretty much a group of people in different settings like their homes talking about how they experience sleep paralysis. My eyes sealed shut, my mouth sealed shut. But here's the kicker. While they're talking about this, the overlay is pretty much in movie form what they're seeing in their heads. So like you are seeing these terrifying creatures, like these faceless black silhouettes of shadows and ominous music and the, the scenery changes in the movie and it's scary. And because I have seen someone experience sleep paralysis in real life, it scares the actual shit out of me. I got about 45 minutes into that movie and I had to turn it off because that stuff affects me. If I know that it's real, that's when I'm scared. <laughs> Anyways, I do believe I one. it's either this movie or like someone told me about it or I was watching something, but I know for a fact that um, if you have sleep paralysis, the more you speak about it, I'm like terrified to go to bed tonight. Oh my God. The more you speak about it, the more it'll like affect you, but I'm gonna shut up there because 
Homie, don't play those games. Not today. Not today. Not ever. The third one that I'm going to talk about is also on Netflix and I will leave it down below. It's another older one. I believe it's from like 2011, but it's definitely worth watching during Halloween time. It's called Nightmare Factory. And for those of you who love special effects as much as I do, you guys would love this one. This actually got me into trying my own special effects. So the premise of this documentary is behind the scenes of movie magic, gore, blood and gore, all of the special effects. You pretty much get to see how it's made and how it's produced. So it's, it's very good. It's very interesting. So I will leave it linked down below. I also have been dabbling in a little bit more special effects makeup on my Instagram. So if you guys want to check that out, I will leave that down below. But truly, it is a very effective documentary if you guys love blood and gore and special effects as much as I do. <sighs> so... This last one here is the whole reason why I wanted to make this to begin with. There is a very, I don't want to insult anyone, but a very sick individual who runs his own haunted house. Let me backtrack here. There's a documentary on Netflix called Haunters, The Art of the Scare, and it's about people who run their own haunted houses. I watched it. I was affected by it. Russ McCanny, I believe that is his name, runs his own haunted house called McCanny Manor. And within the year of me knowing about this man's existence, I have learned a lot about him. I hope you guys are ready for this. I'm gonna put a trigger warning here because this gets dark fast. So I first saw Russ on this documentary, Haunters, and you know, you you would think that he is a normal husband, uh, person, until you see what he puts people through. So recently I've learned that Russ is ex-military and he, what he does is consensual torture. I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. <laughs> There is another documentary that I will, you know, link down below if I can find it. If not, you guys can search it. It's called The Blackout Experiments. And they do a similar thing to what Russ does, but it's people who have been through things and need to kind of feel that terror again to kind of get over it. And it's all consensual, very safe. And what Russ does is not safe. Safety is always paramount. No one's ever been hurt. Didn't someone have a heart attack? Yeah, besides a heart attack victim, yeah. And the people that do the blackout experiments even don't necessarily like what Russ does. I believe his name is Russ. I don't think it's Ross, let me check. Okay, so it is Russ McCammy and not McCanny. So, McCanny Manor, like I mentioned, is his haunted house. I'm sorry if I'm getting a little off track with this, but this, this sick individual really fucked me up learning about him. So, yeah. Usually there is a wait list of like 2,000 people, 1,000 people who are waiting to experience McCammy Manor. So me editing here, I just want to make a note that for a fact, uh, Russ did not allow safe words up until this year. So God knows what he was doing to these people when they could not refuse what he was doing. Pretty much, you go. At first it was people were waiting in line to go through his house. And what he would do is like military techniques on them, but in a, a haunting way. He would chase them with chainsaws like, in the waivers you have to sign. I'm gonna get into that later. Anyways, basically in the movie Haunters, his neighbor is so fucking unbelievably terrified of him because she went through his haunted house and he tortured her. And his goal was to get her to go through again so he could make her life even more of a living hell. Like, there are complaints that the neighbors are hearing people scream, 
please don't kill me when he's running this haunted house. Okay, if you guys wanna know more about that, watch the movie because I'm gonna fast forward to this year. If you guys watch the documentary, it's you know a show, but it's pretty much a documentary, um, Dark Tourist on Netflix. The last episode actually features Russ and poor David, I believe that's his name. Let me Google. Daniel. I'm bad with names, okay, people? <laughs> so anyways, Daniel and an actual guy who was going, anyways, this father, uh, spoiler alert, he is an adrenaline junkie who wanted to just, you know, see what it was like. He was looking for his next thrill. They both tapped out before anything serious. Well, no, I'm lying. The dad, really, he lasted a while. But what I've learned through seeing this, you know, show with him once again and learning more about him is now what they do is you, he takes you, he, like, his wife divorced him. He has a new girlfriend and they've moved out into the middle of like nowhere where they take people and they make them sit there and they go through a very extensive contract. Hi, me here again. They also apparently call the police to inform them that they're doing a show on the night of when they're doing it so that if they get any strange calls saying they hear death happening just to disregard it because it's just Russ doing consensual torture. Uh, hour long, hours and hours and hours of contracts. And once you are done, people come up behind you, they blindfold you and they will start the torture. So like literally they put things in your mouth to open your mouth real wide, bags over your head so you can't see where you're going, duct tape your eyes shut. And once he has you, you are his plaything and he will fuck with you psychologically and physically and it is disgusting. The things that he does, trigger warning here, he, I have watched this man stick his entire hand down people's throats to make them throw up and then eat their own vomit. He warns as you are signing the contract that you, he is not liable for like breaking your bones. Like you are responsible. He'll, he will cut you. He will bruise you. He will kick you. He will waterboard you. He will drown you. He will do whatever he finds suitable. You're going to get hurt tonight. Right. You're going to get drowned. You're going to get buried. To you. And if you can't do it, you have to say a safe word to embarrass yourself. Like a phrase to embarrass yourself. Like, I would be like, hi, my name is Ashley and I'm an ugly fat pig who doesn't know how to do YouTube. Like, you know, not really, but like that's the kind of stuff that he would make you say on video to humiliate yourself for not being able to go through with it. Like he's really evolved this whole um, haunted house and it's not really a haunted house anymore. Like I said, it's essentially consensual torture and it affected me. If you guys can tell, like my eyebrows have been like this the whole time I've been talking about it because he is one sick motherfucker. And don't get me wrong, like I am into some sick stuff, but like if you're literally laughing because you're making someone eat their own vomit, like that was my worst fear until I turned like 23. Like throw up, no. So anyways, if you guys wanna learn more about Russ, <laughs> You guys can watch the documentary Haunters and then I do encourage you guys to check out Dark Tourist on Netflix. Watch the last episode to see Russ McCammy and all of the shenanigans that go down at McCammy Manor. I literally feel like my heart feels heavy talking about that stuff. Mm, he really grinds my gears. So that is all for this video. I hope you guys got a little spooked because I'm feeling incredibly unsettled and I think I might need a shower after talking about Russ. So if you guys want more videos of me talking about my favorite movies, if you guys like this style of video, if you guys would like more videos of me talking about my favorite albums, documentaries, whatever, I am trying to change up my style here on YouTube. And I thought that Spooky Month would be the perfect opportunity to try that out, so. 
Thank you guys for 800 subscribers. I am so unbelievably thankful. You guys have no idea. Don't forget to go down below and check out the documentaries that are on YouTube. I think I said that already. Don't forget to check out the other ones on Netflix. And please don't forget to check out my Instagram. It will be linked down below. I love you guys so much. And I will see you guys in my next video. It's probably going to be a style slash DIY not spooky video. So heads up. Sayonara suckers.